I'm Peter Delamere. I'm a professor of space physics at the Geophysical Institute uh, and joint with the physics department at UAF. In 2021, we launched the Kinetics rocket mission um, from Wallops Island, Virginia. My name is Don Hampton. I'm a research associate professor here at the Geophysical Institute and also chief scientist at Poker Flat Research Range and I was a co-investigator on the Kinetics sounding rocket mission. This mission was called Kinetics, Kinetics Scale Energy and Momentum Transport Experiment. One of the first couple of missions that were launched after the pandemic, uh, which posed its own challenges. So the partner institutions for Kinetics included Dartmouth, University of New Hampshire, Clemson University, and NASA Goddard. It was a very large four-stage rocket, larger than is normally used at Wallops, but uh, we needed to get to very high altitude for doing this experiment, so we went to about 400 kilometers altitude with the four-stage rocket. The problem that we're studying is fundamentally related to the aurora. So one of the challenges in understanding the aurora is how are electrons energized? The electrons that exist in the solar wind are fairly low energy. They're not sufficient energy to light up the sky the way that we observe it. So something happens in the Earth's close space environment that basically energizes and directs those electrons down the Earth's magnetic field lines into the atmosphere. For years, it's not been fully understood what that process is. And so the idea of kinetics is to use, to make a very controlled experiment where we have essentially a known input parameter, this barium cloud. It contains a certain amount of momentum and energy and from that, we can then generate all of the complicated processes that take place in a very, very controlled environment. And at the same time, measure the electron energization. So these are, what we're studying are fundamental, what we call plasma physics processes. It's the field of space plasma physics. And what was remarkable with this experiment is we got one data point, which was exactly what we predicted. It may be a bit analogous to a needle in a haystack finding this event, but we found it. These releases are, are pretty exciting. Um, we, we made the mistake on a different mission, not this mission, of, of not really mentioning to the local public that we were going to do this. So we launched and, and we released these very colorful clouds in, in the, the coastline near Norway, near the launch facility. Uh, people were calling up the police <laughs> wondering what was going on. So, so since then we've, we've, we've learned our lesson and, and we try to put out public releases and say, hey, there's likely to be a launch. Uh, there's gonna be this colorful cloud. Don't worry, it's just, it's just an experiment and just enjoy the colors of the cloud. And so we had done that quite a bit. And so people were actually uh, lined up and ready. So what we use is um, neutral barium vapor. So you basically build this, this thermite canister, which is essentially like a, a little bomb. Uh, you detonate it and it produces barium vapor. When exposed to sunlight, that barium vapor becomes ionized. And when it's ionized, then it's in a plasma state, which is exactly what we need for studying electron energization. The beauty of barium is, it's, is it scatters sunlight and it produces a green line emission for the neutrals and a purple line emission for the ions. So with the cameras, we can clearly see these, these uh, plasma clouds. We had uh, two auxiliary supporting components to, to Wallops. While it was launched from Wallops Island itself, we had ground-based optics in Bermuda. Professor Don Hampton was in charge of the ground-based optics there. Well, you know, somebody had to take a sacrifice for the team, and so I decided I would do that. So for these chemical releases, you have to have what we call ground sites, although in this case we had a ground site of Bermuda and we also had an airplane from NASA that was flying north of Bermuda on the other side of the rocket trajectory. Because we launched from Wallops, because of the geometry of the magnetic field that we needed, um, there weren't many options for ground sites, and so Bermuda was really kind of the only option as, as, a, as an actual physical ground site. That combination with their plane made the best kind of viewing. So we had a couple of UAF graduate students working with us on this mission. We wanted to give the students a chance to do the plane stuff because it's a little, little more exciting. Kylie Branning was on the aircraft operating optics, and sitting next to me was Matt Blandon, and he was actually communicating directly with the, with the aircraft. The major thing was to make sure that the plane was ready to go because the plane had about an hour, an hour and a half transit to its observing point. So we had to make sure that we thought the weather was gonna be okay for them to fly before we made that decision. Being a first time PI on a mission like this, I thought, well, 10 days seems like an eternity. It can't be that hard to get the weather window we're looking for. Our first challenge was the jet stream was essentially going directly over wallops. 
Winds aloft are very concerning, and for the first three or four days, we had very strong winds over wallops. And so essentially, those nights were scratched. We had some other technical difficulties, and then when we really had the right conditions for a launch at Wallops, we had bad weather in Bermuda. And so the story goes on, and as it turns out, we launched on the very last night of that window. On the night of the launch, we had good conditions for the rocket at Wallops, good conditions for the aircraft, but we had cloudy conditions at Bermuda, initially. Yeah, it was, it was a bit tense. Um, you can't hurry the weather on your own just by worrying about it, but you still worry about it. And so I was, I was out there, you know, walking back and forth on the lawn, looking out over the sky and see whether those clouds were moving away. That last 15 or 20 minutes, the, we got a clear skies there and, and the airplane was in the right position. So we were able to get the launch off and be able to see it from both sides, which was, which was uh, kind of remarkable. We came up a little short and a little bit left, but it's remarkable how precise that was. I mean, the Wallops personnel do a fantastic job in predicting that, that trajectory, just based on our understanding of the winds aloft. The cameras we are using are, are Nikons and Sonys, and, and, and so they, they've, they've got a little uh, a memory card in them, so I was able to pull that out, plug it into my computer, uh, and send it off to the PI, Peter Delamere, uh, right away. So he was able to see that we got a really good re result from the releases. So the favorite memory obviously has to be the PI saying, we're getting data, we've got data. And also Don Hampton texting me a picture of a barium cloud that he had taken. So I remember Don's text saying, I see it, I see it. And at that point, okay, there was all of the preparation, the anxiety, well, what if the rocket blows up on the pad, or what if it goes off course, or what if the instruments don't deploy? But when you actually hear the COI saying, hey, we've got data, that's tremendously satisfying. We had some neighbors and we'd been talking to them about it. And so they knew it was likely to happen. And they all came out that night. And uh, uh, you can hear on one of the videos, uh, the, whole, the whole neighborhood's kind of starting to cheer when they actually finally see the clouds go off. <laughs> There's a general heating of the electrons that was observed, but then there was also a beam of electrons, and it's, it's the beam of electrons along the magnetic field that would potentially make the aurora. So I called that beam the golden data point. It was a very short-lived beam, uh, but that was absolutely critical to the success of the mission to measure that beam. We learned some. Uh, I think there's more we can learn. We have some other ideas on what we can do next time. So hopefully there's a next time. One of the most exciting aspects of my job at the Geophysical Institute is actually working with the students. So I'm a professor of space physics. Half of my time is really spent teaching um, both undergraduate and graduate courses at UAF. But on the research end, I get to work with the graduate students directly. And I had, we had three graduate students ultimately involved in this kinetics project. And for one of those students, it, it resulted in a PhD degree. And so it's, it's extremely satisfying to watch the learning experience. And essentially the, the you know, real, real world experience of getting your hands on data that's coming hot off the press like that, it's, it's brand new. Uh, they've developed models, they can start doing data model comparisons. And it's really, really quite satisfying to see that process come to fruition. Poker Flat's fairly isolated, so when we do a launch there, you know, we may have a few Aurora watchers out and get to see that. Uh, the thing about this is we were going to make a light show, you know, off the eastern seaboard, and so there, there are potentially millions of viewers out there. It's kind of fun to think that uh, people out there were watching what we were doing, and, and, and maybe we, we inspired some kids to, to you know, think about doing something in the sciences. I think that would be a lot of, very nice outcome of that as well.